so until 7 uh for bishop to join us and um i don't think we should hold the meeting any longer as we are all <laughs> tired and as Teresa just said she's not feeling well so you know um we'll get started it's uh 7 10 uh mm -hmm. for recording purposes uh Khalid. um so we'll call the meeting to order and as bishop is not here we don't have a word of encouragement at this time and since we haven't received word as to whether she will be here or not um we'll just uh let her join in as you know we go on with the meeting um everyone received the minutes and the agenda for the meeting yes okay so um i will make a motion to accept the minutes in the agenda for tonight the minutes from the last me last month's meeting and the agenda for tonight and i second that thank you very much mr herbert yes, and um we will move along here to roll call we know that the three of us are here and um mm -hmm. we don't need to introduce ourselves again and um We'll move on to all business. Okay. As you can see on the agenda, there's a listing of all the, uh, the concerns that we have been discussing uh, at our prior meetings. Um, I don't know if there, anyone has any updates um, in terms of, um, I did not receive any um, from the board office. Um, in terms of the DEP uh, representative, which is the uh, first, uh, um thing on the uh old business um yeah, I, I just attached uh, excuse me chair yes sorry. Yeah. go ahead I just, yeah i had an update but i'll just i figure i say it now it's from dante it's basically okay. about you know come down to the to your meeting about the dep representative yes. so after you know you develop the questions the committee develops those questions to bring to the DEP because we rather the DEP has the list of concerns rather than he comes to the meeting. Then we have the, we give him our concern, give him your concerns and then he comes back. So it's no back and forth kind of be like a one shot deal in terms of, uh, you know, deliverables on that case. And he also asks, would March be ideal for the DEP representative to come to the meeting? So that's just some questions he wanted. He wanted to ask. I was going to wait till you got to that point, but I figured I'd just tell you now. Okay, great. So that was the whole purpose behind, you know, making sure that we had something um in place. Um so the attachment along with the agenda is um you know, the list that I came up with. Um so I hope everyone had an opportunity to uh take a look at that. And yeah. um if anyone has any, you know, input or changes that they would want they want to see um from those items um we can always make those adjust adjustments um tonight so that you know we don't have to go another meeting to talk about the same thing over again and okay. um so i'm going to open up the floor if anyone has any input pertaining to the first item on the old business um, which would be the um, the concerns and um, so, the, uh, mitigation, uh, flood and mitigation um, presentation for DEP uh, representative. So, so I don't have any concerns with the questions that are here. Right. Uh, what I did do, I finished reading the uh, the plan. Okay plan and based on what i read uh, and we can you know discuss it when we get into new business on yes. how the plan here will affect some of these questions and we can edit it um like i said i, I have some things that i just want to bring up when we get to that session mm -hmm. right? okay okay so we can yeah we can do that in new business um 
in terms of the uh, second uh, item on there. Um, okay, so that pertains to the same topic mm -hmm. right there. Right. Uh, Zipcar, any updates, uh, Khalid, about Zipcars? Or anyone, if anyone has any? Uh, I didn't hear anything about Zipcar, but that is a, um, a question that I have for Dante tomorrow morning. Okay. Now, right. Just a quick question. Now, now that I'm, I'm, I'm in town, where, yes. where are these zip cars located exactly? Well, I believe that that was some that was one of the questions that you know we had or spoke about at the last yeah. meeting. Um, I believe there I'm is a sure list. If anyone was able to um, come up with that information, um, I I know where a lot of them are because a lot of them are by my house, um, a lot. And by Abbott's, we have a plethora of zip car and other type of car uh, rent. It's not just zip car, there's several other brands um, in our area. They seem to be placed um, in and near corners. I think that's because of the, the rezoning that's gonna happen where you're allowed to have commercial entities on residential places with the city of mm -hmm. yes they're for some reason putting zip cars we have a where i live there's these small little streets stoddard and ludlam mm -hmm. that in, that connect so they're just little blocks you know yeah, so that's every on every corner they have anywhere from two to three to four zip cars and they have them down the commercial quarters so we have quite a few spots missing um, I don't know where they are. The, the Department of Transportation Commissioner did come to the Transportation Committee meeting, which I did, did attend. I can't remember if Rod was there. That was quite interesting. And um, the concerns that the Transportation Committee had, which included like they not cleaning their spots, they not having to move for outside them, um, not taking care of the cars, people dumping, all that stuff was addressed and he didn't really seem to have any um, answers for it. But they, that continues. They don't, they don't sweep the leaves. They don't maintain the spots as they're supposed to. They don't take care of them. They don't clean the garbage. It's left up to the homeowners that are there to maintain those spots, which is not how it's supposed to go, but that is definitely how it is going. So they're okay. Really so, can, you, can, you, so, can you give me like a few, just two, give me two locations where they're located. I just want to take a ride by it and just take a look at it. If you go to Sullivan Place between mm -hmm. Ludlam, Sullivan Place and Ludlam, you'll see three spots. Okay. If you go um, up um, Stoddard, there's a couple spots up there. If you go down toward, if you go on Montgomery, mm -hmm. you know, if you go toward the... Um, toward Ebbets, toward Bedford, there's spots. If you drive around, I know people at Ebbets call are really complaining. So I, I don't know how many spots there are around there, but it seems to be where they put a lot of them. Okay. Um, I know there's some on, there's at least one, I think on Sterling, but I, I don't know for sure. Debbie would know better about that, but I definitely know. And okay. if you come this, up, this is good. This is good. Here. I can take a look. Uh, what? You can see the what lovely... I Add to there. that is since transportation is on this topic, I think that we need to focus on something else mm -hmm. other than zip cars. If they are dealing with that, which that's where it should be, um, you know, but it would be good to know what the policies are in terms of these zip cars. What, 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 you know, what is, you know, where they're supposed to be, where are they, you know, where, where they originated from, you know, and all these things. We, we, we know all that. I've been to those meetings, we know all that. And it's it, the environmental issue, I guess why it's on our agenda is because they're not cleaning the spots and they're causing problems, you know, with the environment. And they're supposed to help the environment, right? Are they? I think a few would be good, but we have too many. Okay, so if transportation is discussing this topic, I think maybe, you know, that, more or less, if, if even if it's a sanitation issue, because if the cars are not moved, the spaces cannot be cleaned. Well, so, they're not. 
you know, it's it's um, you know, it's a technical situation where they first need to, you know, get all the necessary answers to the questions that people have in terms of why they are located in certain areas and what is it like as I said, what the policies are in terms of them removing their vehicles from those places so that they you know, uh, sanitation can get in to do what they're supposed to do. You know, they, they're supposed to clean them. That's the policy. The people purchasing. Okay, them so so we need to know. So then the next question would be, for and them they are to, not. They for are them not. to let us know why they why they're not being moved. That's that's the other question. And they're not they're not subject to any fines or any regulation that I have seen. So all of those things we need. You know, we would need to know why. You know, we know why. It? I'm sorry. We know why. And can you elaborate if you know why? Because you said you went to the transportation meeting. Um, I did not get enough. Why, why are they doing it? Because it, there's no enforcement. There's a lack of enforcement. I don't think anybody knows how to enforce it. it and the enforcement essentially winds up with the homeowners getting a ticket because there's that 15 inch rule for in front of your house. Okay, so, so it, again, we need it, to know what the policies are and then we can, you know, I guess, or transportation need to follow up on those things and, you know, find out, well, why, you know, they're not being enforced. <laughs> That's, I mean, well, if they, you know why. I would think that those are questions that should have been laid out to them. They were, they were, they were at the meeting. They what were. What did they, he say? Because he, we're not going to spend all night talking about transportation okay. issues. Um, we you, need to stick with our you, agenda. You can uh, listen to the meeting on Zoom, Debbie, and you can hear for yourself. Okay, so I could do that, you know, on you know, when I have some free time and um, you know, get a sense as to what they're talking about because I mean, if it's an issue that needs to be brought up at the um bars uh, not bar service, but the um service meeting where all the uh, city services are supposed to be at that meeting as well. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why, you know, we don't have, there's no answers to those questions. Um, yeah, the, it it did just make doesn't. A resolution that you voted on earlier this year in the fall, they had a resolution that we voted on as a board. Do you remember about all these topics? Yeah. Okay. So, Good. So then the next step would be to find out exactly what happened, what came out of that. Nothing. Oh boy. It's still happening. I'm I witness it every day and everybody's just... Okay, so 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 I guess the board office need to follow up on that to find out yes. why isn't it being enforced? I mean it, it you know there's no committee that can address that issue. It has to be dealt with by the board office and they need to know, let you know, whether it's a commissioner or the assistant commissioner or whoever the liaison is, um, know that we have questions, we have concerns. Residents have questions that they need answered pertaining to, you know, those is that issue. Um so Mr. Herbert you know, has his hand up FYI. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Herbert. No, so I, I was just saying that if if they are parking on the streets and I see that I'm just looking at, on the website, the DCAS mm -hmm. website, right? It appears that they may have a contractual obligation to keep the streets clean uh -huh. for where the zip cars are, similar yeah. to what city bikes have. So uh, if we do, and if they are to clean the streets, then that means they will be in com uh, compliant with the agreement. So I think right now, um, Dante, if you could just find out, I'm not, I'm not sure who to, um, to That's Khalid, Khalid. Not sure who, yeah, who, who, who it should go to, but we need to find out the contractual obligation, all right, that the zip car folks have with mm -hmm. regards to utilizing and occupying that space, and it, it should be the DOT. And and I actually think that those, I mean, all those things need to be done in writing. It's not right. a discussion anymore because Correct. we're not getting answers. Correct. You know, so talking is not, uh, I, I mean, and you can convey that to uh, Dante, um, Khalid, um, yes. because, you know, if transportation is talking about it and no, nothing is being done, I think that, that, you know, it needs to be in writing so that somebody has to respond. 
Yes. So we should, okay, we should request the, the contract. All yeah. right. I'll follow up with him in the morning. Right. Okay. So, Thanks. so, okay. So that's good. Thank you uh, for that, um, Mr. Herbert. And thank you, Don uh, Khalid, for um, following up on that. Um, and, uh, okay. So Zipcar. Um, the, um, I know, Mr. Herbert, you sent us something on the, uh, and I think I read that on uh, online as well prior to you sending the uh, DEP Capital Project um, updates. Um, so it would be good to tie that. I think I did add that to the uh, list of um, concerns okay. in terms of what, you know, what is, what, what is, where is the project and, you know, how does it. Right. How what is what is the plan for our community and any community in Brooklyn? Um, you know, I don't know what where it is, you know, whether the the funding is there already, you know, whether it's something that's still in the planning phase. So we need to I mean, all those pieces are a part of that presentation, you know, so that we, you know, kind of get a sense as to what's happening. Right. Right. And like I said, okay. I'll talk more on that when we get to the newer business. Okay, good. All right. And I believe we had something on the uh, Committee on Environmental Protection Resiliency Waterfront, um, which was the uh, New York City Council piece. I'm not sure what you know, that entail, you know, so hopefully we can get all those things, you know, answered as a part of that whole presentation piece as well. And um, the green infrastructure, I don't know if anyone has any updates on that. I know that there's been some meetings going on um, as well as, you know, the um, city of Yesa, Oh, for the, uh, the the green fast track. Yeah, the fast track. Yeah. Yeah. So I I attended a few of the the the, the one of the meetings that was online and a uh, well two meetings, one mm -hmm. info session and one was uh, the, the hearing. And, okay. Um, you know, people uh, testified. Uh, you know, but the the panel seems you know dead dead straight on making this happen and uh -huh. I, I i voiced some concerns during that meeting mm -hmm. uh, you know of course they'll take everything in and, and and look at it but uh, you know overall there are still concerns with regards to you know just getting rid of the environmental review process based on certain projects mm -hmm. in its entirety um and i think nicola cox was on the meeting too and she she voiced her concerns as well. So, uh, as far as CB nine, you know, we're on board that you know we don't want this green fast track. Uh, there are a, a number of things that can slip through the cracks, and we really won't know the impact, you know, until until it, something so, major happens. Right, like, until that's major. always. But it's it's there's, there's flaws in it. I don't believe that they really uh, looked in it on a case by case basis. They lumped everything into one big uh pool and right. based, based on their overall look of things um it, it should be no impact but i totally disagree totally i totally disagree if we are getting uh you know flooded now you know who's to say you know what's going to happen you know down the road mm -hmm. you know with all the climate change and the global warming and all of those things you know even uh so did they specify whether they're going to have any additional hearings on this topic? Oh, I, I, I have to take a look, Debbie. I don't I'm going to have to, yeah, I can follow up on that as well. Yeah, I, I don't recall. To see what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so I guess we'll have to keep an eye out on this, this topic as well. Yeah, but that's ongoing. And I know the, the ULIP committee, they're, they're, they're looking at this as well. I Yeah, as they should, yeah, because of all the... Uh, construction and all these uh, upcoming uh, projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Ms. Westerdahl, I see your hand up. 
Yeah, I just want to say that I've been attending the hearings and the um, info sessions as well. And it's it's a bit abysmal as far as I'm concerned about mm. what's happening. Um, yeah. They're going to remove, like, the community board is going to have no power over so many projects. Mm -hmm. No mental review. And it's it's dangerous for our um, our city's future, I feel. Agreed. And the environmental concerns also for the, um, you know, the city of Yes with the uh, commercial residential changes is, is right. really dangerous for the environment. You know, if we're going to talk about the environment or the Environmental Protection Committee, we're not, it's going to be impossible to protect things. I mean, there's no, it's, it's hard to get oversight now, you know, and our agencies that oversee this seems like our mayor wants to defund them i mean hopefully the federal agencies you know maintain their funding because it's kind of what we got the the dob like the city funded agencies are have uh seem to just let things slide so well, you'll see maybe we, uh, as a board, we need to reach out to our electeds um, so that they know what our position is on, on you know, these things, these topics that um, is just rolling out quickly. And in most cases, it's a done deal before we can even hear about it. And well, um, that has happened now's the quite time. often. Now's and now it seems as though it's more often than, you know, even before. Um, so I would think that, uh, we should, um, try to get something in writing again, in terms of how we feel as a board, this is not any particular committee. It's about, you know, the board as a whole, um, you know, coming to terms with, you know, all of these things that's before, you know, before us that we, you know, have no input in and whatever, a uh, little power that we have. I mean, if they keep taking it away, it means that, you know, we have no say and we, you know, we're not able to advocate on behalf of, you know, the residents in our communities. So. Well, I think if, if we're dealing with the environment, we as a committee need to write something and propose it. The, the board doesn't have time in their meetings to to write a proposal we should do it and then propose it from our perspective as an environmental protection committee. I believe that's the way to go because the work is supposed to be done in the committees. That's what we're told. And, you know, if you want to work on that, I'm willing. But it's, it's an issue that reaches out not only to the environmental, it's ULERP, it's, you know, um, so, I mean, it's something that, I guess we, as a, you know, we need to discuss as, you know, committees, not just one committee and see, you know, how we feel about, you know, coming up with something, you know, as such. Um, well, we have to think on, that, it, on it or just not because it's not going to get I'm sorry. If we're going to work on it as a committee, we need to work on it. It's not going to get done otherwise. You know, we got to do our part. Our environment. Well, I think that it's going to get done, but it, I mean, it could get done. However, like I say, we need to, you know, discuss it as a whole amongst the, commi the committees that, you know, bear, you know. Could input. you please set up, set up that meeting, Debbie, please? Um, if we're going to discuss as whole as committees, could you set up a meeting amongst committees? Please? So maybe we need to bring it up to the executive committee and let them know what our thoughts are and where all the uh, committee chairs are supposed to be a part of that meeting and um, figure out, you know, what's the best way to move forward on that. So yeah. maybe at the next... The I next if yes meetings we may have quite a, quite a great uh, quite a great resolutions and information that they've put out i wish we could do something similar which one which say that again 
Um, Isuki and Nicola, I've been going to the meetings. They have that they have that subcommittee, you know, the subcommittee for the city of yes resolutions uh -huh. that have been working on. We've been voting on them at every meeting. We voted on several at the last meeting. And we missed, you know, kind of put us behind because at the December meeting, we weren't, we didn't have quorum, so we couldn't vote on those. It's uh -huh. actually created kind of a big problem because we needed to get those resolutions that the board made that the subcommittee created, you know, on behalf of Europe. And there were other committee members there, other chairs were there from other committees. I wish you would have been there. Please, Debbie. But the thing about it is we, across the board, we have issues with members not attending the meetings and <clears throat> no quorums. So that's an issue by itself. And, you know, it continues yeah, well, to be it, that way. Yeah, and it anyway. makes it difficult so to those, get those anything were, done. They, 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 we could work on our part with the environment with those resolutions. We could do it. You know, so it's it's you know it's something that needs to be dealt with so that as we move forward we can you know push thing a lot things along because if this continues and i mentioned that to the chair um at the um after the uh, general board meeting last week um that you know we need to you know focus on how we're going to move forward in terms of getting things done because if you know the committee if you're having so much problems with you know, people attending the committee meetings and the general board meetings, and, you know, that needs to be addressed so that, you know, we can get things done that, you know, are important to us and to our community as a whole. Um, so that's another issue by itself. But, um, yeah, I think we can um, talk about, you know, how we want to move forward on, you know, this... Um, would it would it would it be a good idea? Yeah. In order in order to, because the, uh, many of these committees, uh, the responsibilities of jurisdiction say they, they sort of collide. Exactly. So would it be a good idea, in the ULERP subcommittee, mm -hmm. uh, to bring up the green infrastructure within that committee as well? Because mm -hmm. this here will affect all of the. Uh, you know, you look concerns yes. in that. So we could tie them together instead of one group doing one thing and the other group doing another. And that's I, what I, I meant when I, yeah, that's what I meant when I said, you know, we need to include other committees that, you know, share, you know, um, pieces of that puzzle. Um, so. So I can bring it up to Suki if you know I can just talk to her and see if okay. So you, you want okay, so that's fine. I'll just list you as the uh that you will have a conversation with uh Suki. Yes. Okay. Tara, how do you feel about that? I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you know, it, it makes sense to me to, you know, reach out to um, you look as a whole um, in terms of, you know, what their thoughts are. I know that they've been doing a lot with the, um, you know, the uh, city of yes and all this infrastructure stuff. Um, so it would be good to collaborate with them okay. and get a sense as to what their thoughts are in terms of, you know, how to move forward on that so you can if you want to collaborate with them you need to go to their meetings i've been going to the meetings and it's so it's mr herbert just mentioned that he will you know have a discussion with her so um if i can get a chance to um join one of their meetings um i know she's been inviting you she with my crazy schedule i will definitely try to do that I think uh, they. I'll try to find out. They're done. I think they're moving on to new. You know, they've they've gone. They're through. done. Well, they're not completely done because as long as they're still throwing these, city of yes. Okay, so yeah, so I'll um I can I mean Miss Herbert will reach out to her and then, um. You can provide us with some input. I mean feedback, by email. Yes. 
Okay, so that's good. Um, so we, you know, we look forward to hearing from you on that one. Um, so we're going to move on in terms of the uh, composting and the DSNY bins. I don't think, I think that's a dead issue. Um, as you, we all know that a sanitation representative was at the last general board meeting. And I did receive an email from Dante that um, there will be no more bins. So, you know, I don't know how else to <laughs> get more bins, but that's what I was informed in email form. So we, uh... Theresa, go ahead. I see your hand up still. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm just going to say that I'm going to continue to ask for more bins whenever whenever I'm giving a chance. I think we should also have somebody from sanitation come and talk to us as well. Uh, I'll we, did have, we did have the assistant commissioner at the meeting, the general board meeting. You were there. Yeah, I know. But I think to talk about more uh, detailed issues that we have, it'd be nice to have somebody from sanitation come to a meeting and invite the community because I know a lot of people have questions. Okay. Just, so would okay. you consider that having sanitation come? So um so Khalid, can you ask Dante to find out whether we can have, you know, someone come and address the um Would it be to the general board or because I think everybody needs to know if if this is regarding, you know, you know, the, uh, the, the, I, the bins, which that, again, oh, he already spoke about and there's none. So, I mean, we need to be specific in terms of what, why we want them to come there. Um, City, yes. Or who are you referring to? I didn't hear you. No, sanitation. Okay. In terms of, yeah, in terms of the bins and and so, it was already addressed. So there's not yeah. going to be any bins. So we're not okay. going to All talk right. about just... that anymore, um, at least at this meeting, unless, you know, um, we hear different from DSNY that they are able to get more bins. Um, yeah. In terms of that use, we're at the meeting, you know. Yes. No bins, no more rollout at this moment. So. If anything, any updates so happen. Unless there's a specific reason as to why we want them to, you know, come and address, you know, the um, board or, you know, any particular um, committee on any, you know, issue, then we need to be specific in terms of what it is that we, you know, want them to come and talk about. Um, other than that, I think that, you know, the board office can reach out to them in terms of whether there's you know, something, an issue going on in any particular community or, you know, area of the community to have it addressed. Um, well, I think it would be okay. nice to create an, an atmosphere in, uh -huh. in our meetings. Um, we obviously don't have anybody coming anymore from the larger community. And people have expressed to me that... Mm -hmm. They would like this. They would like to talk to somebody from sanitation. And I think at the board meetings, there's too much going on. We have too much to do. And I think a meeting such as ours, if you have somebody come and the public can come and ask them the questions they want. And then I definitely have, you know, quite a few questions. So, you know, in relation to especially this, the, the street cleaning and the cars, this type of thing and also like the the garbage pickup issues and rats you know so i don't know i i think it would be an uh a way to reach out and have people come to our meeting and hear what people have to say you know not just to have a larger community come like invite people have a longer conversation I'm just I'm just looking to include are you are you are you city. speaking to you know like a meeting let's say like a forum or something to invite you know 
to an they, open their meetings meeting have for community have like, residents to attend. Aside for public questions, have somebody from sanitation come and discuss, you know, composting, say what, you know, it's just something we could I, have. Let me just, let me just ask you a question to get a sense as to where you're going with this. Um, are you looking for a public meeting with sanitation? Is that are you is that what you're talking referring to? No. What I'm then looking, I'm not looking for any additional meetings. No, uh -huh. I'm not looking for any additional meetings. I'm just looking for them to come to an environmental protection committee meeting. I other committees do this and it's very nice. And like like DOT came and spoke to the transportation committee. And it was um, the commissioner and it was very open-ended and anybody could ask questions. Anybody from the public, anybody from the community, the committee had specific questions. So uh -huh. hoping we could do something like that with, with sanitation, you know, just kind of open-ended, friendly community discussion in one of our meetings, like a guest speaker. And then people will come, they'll ask questions. It'll be great. You know, we're like- okay. Okay, so since you're coming up with that, I'm going to have you work on the on the summary in terms of presenting it to sanitation so that Dante can present it to them in terms of coming to a meeting to discuss those things. Does Dante really need to call them? It seems like a lot of extra work. I could just call and ask. You well, gave you me requested for the DEP I'm... presentation. So I'm assuming yeah, that that's what I, they're going to ask. The number you gave me from last time, I could just do it. If you like, okay. So yeah, that would be good, so that we can provide him with that information and get some feedback. Maybe come in. I April. can also follow up with Dante in terms of this too. I'll just see see him if I do an email. Yeah, but I would speak with him too, just so you know, but coming from both ways. Okay, thank you, uh, Khalid. Okay, so Teresa is going on. Work on yeah, that. It, would be, it would be nice too for them to be in touch because we're going to do the, I know it's at the end of the agenda, but we could include it with the, um, with the fair or whatever. Right. I don't know what's happening with that exactly, but if we're going to well, do we something, don't, we don't have much information on that fair at this time. Um, so, it, you know, once we get information, um, we will have a better sense as to. Kali, do you have any idea about that yet? I thought there was a date, June 1st. Not familiar with a date for the community I, fair, I, but I'm sure the community members, with the board members will know uh, I, once it is. What I, from what I was told, what I remember is it's gonna be June, it was the tentative date was June 1st, and it was gonna be in a park near your office, near the board office. I, I have no I information think at on that. the last meeting, Nicholas said that he would Nicholas mentioned something about that. Yeah, uh, right. But I didn't get a date in terms he, of. He said know. June first, but then people were like, "Well, June first is a Saturday. Then the whole community can't come." So right. Well, the, yeah, there's but, been a problem, an issue with that in terms of, you know, um, people that have, you know have Sabbath on Saturdays, and you know, so. Yeah. That's another well, issue. Okay, but I didn't hear anything about the date yet. So hopefully they, you know, they they'll figure it out and get the information to the committees or the to the members um sooner than later because we are in February already. So okay, so um we're gonna move into our new business. Nice. Uh, which pertains to the uh, which is an open discussion on the uh, flood mitigation um, presentation from DEP. Mm -hmm. So we have Ms. Herbert, I'm going to let you speak because you are uh, said that you had some input in terms of the uh, concerns that was you know listed as a part of the agenda for the presentation. Right, okay. so the agenda, I guess for the, for the DEP question mm -hmm. that we have for the uh, individual who's going to be the, the representative. Right. Here. Okay, 
So I, I just want to preface them from this. I I read the entire uh, plan, the, the, right. the flood mitigation plan, the storm water plan. It was a, it was a very good report, very extensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whoever the consultant is who put this together did a did a fantastic job. Okay, but as I read it, there's mm -hmm. some questions where I don't understand how they came about some of the rationale. All right. So <laughs> I, I just I just don't understand. It. And, and there's a lot of things there with, with the things that they want to implement. There's no dates. There's no follow ups. There's no closures or anything. Yeah. Like that. I um, remember you mentioning that at the last meeting as well. Right. And you know, the DEP, the storm mitigation plan, let's just talk about you know, what we see visually as far as. Community right. Court. Right. So the DEP is trying to reduce the floatables, all right, which is, you know, the, the, all the garbage, the paper cups, the bottles, mm -hmm. everything like that, right? So they're trying to minimize that. And they're looking at different, like, uh, water separators that will separate the uh, floatables so they don't go into the sewer system. Uh, mm -hmm. they also, and they put together these different scorecards, which mm -hmm. are under the jurisdictions of different entities like the transportation, uh, um, Department of Sanitation, the police, and everybody. But to make a long story short, mm -hmm. right, I don't understand their scorecard. And their scorecard that they utilize is supposed to be a representative um, allotment of the clean streets within a particular area. And I don't know how they sample it. I don't know if they sample 100 uh, streets within the community board, or they sample 50 streets in the community board. I don't understand it, but they have these percentages of how these how clean these streets are in the neighborhood, which is representative of the whole community board district. But I don't understand the sampling, okay? and, and that's what bothers me. And one of the things in the report, it was stating that uh, as far as uh, mechanized cleaning of the streets, they were saying that 55% of the floatables that they pick up comes from the streets. And I, oh, I, I yeah. Are I, they I don't, getting those numbers from sanitation, maybe? Well, see, that's the thing. It's in the report. Right? <laughs> and I don't understand the sampling. And also, if there's 55% of the streets that they're sampling, I mean, 55% of the floatables is what they collect. Uh-huh. And I'm sending in all of these tickets for all these vehicles that don't move. I'm up to 170 now, right? And all these vehicles that don't move and there's trash underneath them. Mm -hmm. What are, are they sampling the problem areas that I see? All right. So that's what I don't understand. And I was going to suggest that we have this audited, you know, have this plan audited because it didn't make sense to me. But lo and behold, in paragraph, well, not paragraph, but chapter nine that talks about- Yeah, but who would who would be the auditor? Ah, so it was audited. I found an audit from the state controller. Uh-huh. Well, and, and it's, I sent it to everybody. I sent it to Tara, I sent it to you, I sent it to Dante, I and mean, um, you know, Khalid, All right, And it's something, so it says here, there were a number of findings that the state controller found that the DE, that the Department of Sanitation is not doing. Okay, and and it's transparent because I mean, if you walk around, you know, and you look at as I I said when I walked around, and you know, with the snow and the garbage on the uh, the the um, in the drains, you know, and I don't see them if they're supposed to sweep those things up when they pick up the garbage. I don't think I don't see that happening. So, you know. So here's here's one of the findings. I'm just going to read this and it, it falls into what I'm saying. It says, although the Department of Sanitation officials identified project scorecard as their only performance measure for monitoring the cleanliness of New York City streets and sidewalks, the Department of Sanitation does not obtain detailed information from the project scorecard or the mayor's office to effectively deploy its resources in response to the project scorecard's findings. So basically what they're saying is that, well, how are you measuring this? Right. right. And 
they come up with a number of recommendations here, which is key in order to make sure that these streets are clean and how they should measure the how they should measure the cleanliness and the information that should be in the reports. And one of these key findings here is identify the root causes for reoccurring dirty streets or dirty areas and develop solutions to address them, including seeking community department or cross agency engagements where necessary. Now, why do I say that's important? Okay. I've said before that the cleaning of the streets, it's a process, it's a system. It relies on alternate side street rules. It yes. relies on mechanized uh, cleaning and enforcement. All right, so that's the system, it's a triangle. Take away any part of that triangle, it doesn't work. In the postal flood floatable plan, which is here, it says in the plan that the cleanliness of the streets or how well they do, I'm paraphrasing, depends on the number of cars, the, the, the compliance of those abiding by the alternate side parking rules. But that's not it, it's enforcement. It's enforcement. And I thought that sanitation had an enforcement policy because I know usually the, 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 the supervisors right after, you know, the garbage pickup uh, days after the uh, trucks and you know, the sweepers and, you know, check because I've spoken to, you know, the super, the supervisor that, you know, came along across this way on numerous occasions. So about garbage two, being left and you know not picked up and things like that. So right. so there's two entities that issue tickets and summonses. Right? It's, it's the right. traffic department, which is the PD, yeah. and the Department of Sanitation. Right. Okay. So again, on this report, I think it was for the year 2020, mm -hmm. excuse me, 2019, it said the sanitation department only issued about 2,500 summonses for alternate side parking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. Don't if it's twenty twenty, it means that that was during uh, COVID, and a lot of you know. I mean, on our block, we we had a a group cleanup, so different people on different days would go out and pick up garbage. Right, but what happens? That number should have been larger. Mm -hmm. 2,500 citywide, I, I, I don't see it. But I, I, yeah, that's kind of low for city, if it's citywide, you know? Citywide. Yeah. So my, my biggest thing <laughs> here is these key recommendations that they have here that the department said that the state controller stated what the city should do in order to comply, um, you know, with the floatables or the cleanliness of the streets and everything. All right. the, the, the issue here is these recommendations that they have to Department of Sanitation and Operations, mm -hmm. there's no follow-up dates or anything that's listed here. It's just here, and it doesn't say anything about any follow-ups. Well, apparently, from you know what you just said, it seems as though if the state audited their report, their original report, Mm -hmm. Apparently, they just made recommendations, and God knows if anybody followed up on those recommendations, which so, is, yeah. Yeah, that, and that's it. Which so happens my, all the time. So my thing is, since we have this state audit, all right, I would suggest that we put together a motion, all right, and, you know, to, the D, to have the Department of Sanitation and along with their operations unit, provide follow-ups all right, or status or updates with these six recommendations that were implemented or given by the state of New York. And this audit here is back in 2020, September 16th. So okay. they've had more than enough time to act on these recommendations. And it's four years later. And I would be very interested in finding out if they did anything here anything because this here affects i'm thinking globally now this affects their permit to discharge stormwater into waterways 
And I believe that's why the state is involved because the state issues a permit to the city to make sure that they're complying with the permit. You can't discharge stuff into the waterway. So I, I feel that we should find out where they stand with these. And that's enforcement, and that's data collection, that summons data, all of the recommendations that they put here. And one thing they put here was use available data sources such as New York City 311 service requests, violations, summons data, and internal Department of Sanitation monitoring forms to routinely identify specific areas with reoccurring dirty streets and sidewalks. I'd love to know if they're doing that. Okay, so <laughs> in terms of uh, moving forward on that, you know, that, that piece uh, to sanitation. Um, I'm trying to, you know, kind of like get my head wrapped around how you, you know, you, 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 you word it in terms of, you know, asking them to do, you know, follow up in, you know, on those recommendations. Um, so I would say, all right, uh, you just, board is, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, just for writing a resolution, uh, which I've worked on, it's okay. just really a matter of writing whereas, whereas, whereas all your issues and then therefore it's like what you want to have happen. We did worked on that with the 5G towers. But, so, but this is this is about asking questions or looking for answers to a report that was generated and recommendations were made and there's no follow up um no enforcement yeah you just you just write it you just write it and then you propose it so i would say this with regards to the state controller's audit dated yeah. september 16 2020 mm -hmm you know, titled Street and Sidewalk Cleanliness. Right. The committee is requesting right, follow-ups on the key findings identified in the audit to the New York Department of Sanitation. All right, and what we're looking for is for updates, completion, completion times, and status of key recommendations. Okay, oh. so 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 that's your homework. That's can we your just, project. Can we do you, it now? You can send it to the committee and we can re, you know, read it over before we submit it. Um well can we should vote on it now. If you could um simple. I vote yes. I vote yes. <laughs> well, of course if it's if, if we don't have anything else I propose this resolution. And we want to know, you know, vote on it now. It, you can make a motion. Um, somebody can second it. You can make a motion. Make a motion. So, okay. yeah. so I make a motion that we move forward with put it uh, with move moving forward, having the state controllers audit and the key recommendations and the follow-ups given to the Department of Sanitation, all right, have those follow, have this Department of Sanitation advise of follow-ups, uh, resolution of each follow-up, dates and commitments. Sounds good. I second. I, you know, I think you need to reword that. Um, yeah, it's kind of it jumbled tomato. up. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it. I'll, I'll write it. But um, I feel that this is something. This is very important because a state entity came and said, "Hey, you're not doing it right. You're not doing everything that you said you were going to do within your own report that you submitted." So, so let me just ask you a question. The the information that you're reading there is there a name attached to it? Uh. Yeah, it's the New York State Controller Thomas D. DiNapoli. Not, well, that was that's the yeah. Um, so maybe we can reach out to them to find out if anything, if there's any additional information 
pertaining to follow up? So my my it's, experience it's to have a resolution. I think it's really helpful to have those resolutions because the the five G one that we made was spread widely and seen by many many people. I went to you know I had the resolution and I handed it to Rita Joseph. I handed it to Crystal's office. I gave it to Yvette Clark. You know Yvette Clark is the tech person, so it they have wide ranging impact when a when a board has resolutions like that and you vote on them, you can go and just say, have you seen this resolution whenever you're having some other interaction? And it, they it, that piece of paper, it, it means a lot. You know, we have, we're only, you know, board is really only, we're only here to like comment really. We don't have any real power, but that is, it can be powerful when you've written those out and presented them. I'm just, I'm just encouraging, you know, you. No, Thank I, you, Mr. Herbert. Go ahead and I think you had a point that you were trying to get across. Yeah. So so the issue is, I mean, I've 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 dealt with uh agencies trying to get information before, and it's extremely laborious, mm -hmm. it, especially if it incriminates them or it can have that uh, appearance that it will. Um it, it has to be something that's formal that's sent in order for them to move on it that's my experience yes no i totally agree that's why i kept saying you know we need to stop talking and writing because yeah, so I know I'm going to most do... community boards you know that's what they do um you know you, you you know you talk and you talk and you talk and you talk but if you don't put it in writing i mean i know that we we did a lot of um the 5g thing we haven't received any responses from um yeah. so we, we I've received responses. That's not true. It's been. I, oh, I, it's been we sent a been, letter to the. Who did we send a letter to? Uh, Khalid. Um, Khalid. We have not received any responses to that letter. Yeah, from the. the last time I asked, we have not received any responses. Yeah, I can follow up with that as well, though. But um, I, as of I, now, I have no updates from Dante. Just, I'm just, sorry. You can Khalid. Speak. You. Can, I can speak. Go ahead. All right, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I didn't hear any updates from Dante. The only update he gave me heading in towards this meeting was about the DEP. But right. um, yeah, I could follow up with him in terms of that resolution. But I'm sure if he had, if he received anything, he would have passed it along. Yeah, because I'm sure. But let me I just ask him, double check. Yeah, I asked him and he said, no, we didn't receive anything. I think Fred was there as well. And um he, I think he meant Fred mentioned to Dante. Well, maybe yes, we need, need to follow up. So we haven't received anything, just like most most other boards, which probably haven't received any writing from anything in writing from you know about that whole five G thing. So um yeah, so if you can follow up again, you know yeah. um we'll do. That, I think uh, yeah, you know Ms. that West will be good. Her hand up. Yes, go ahead, Teresa. Yeah, I, I think that it's not necessarily when you make a resolution like that 5G, it's not like they're going to respond directly to you because there's there's no point in that. It's like we've already made the resolution and that resolution is brought forth with the same with a similar resolution that many other community boards did a similar resolution. And then that stack is brought and said, hey, look at all these community boards and how they the resolutions they made about the 5G, and that has the, an impact in other ways. Like I went and I, I actually went to um, city council and spoke about it. I went to the city council technology meeting and there were a lot of different, there were a lot of people there. It took all day. And I spoke about our resolution there. So it was presented at the hearing and the entire city council heard it. You know, everybody there heard about our resolution and they that affected how they voted and how you know what they're going to do. I, you know, it it's helpful in a way that transcends them directly just responding to us. It's like all these community boards together feel this way about just using the 5G as an example. Then they say, like, oh, you know, that gets their attention. And it affects how they're voting and how they're working, those politicians on our behalf. 
So it's, it's important. I hope that makes sense. But it's not like, you know, Crystal's going to call up Dante and say, hey, yeah, I got I got it, you know, or Rita, I got it. Yes, you know? yes. But if, if I sent a letter to the president, if I sent a letter to, to the president or of any company, whether it's D.C. or, you know, any high end company, I would expect to get a response. Well, then that's up to, to then if you really want a response, then, you, you know, know, um, if, yes. if it's, 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 you know, it's, um, it if should be a part a of the response. protocol. I mean, I feel like I got a response. So well, I didn't see one in writing. Yeah. So, well, you know, I, I don't know. Um, so, so all the boards, so all, all the boards putting information out there, nothing is coming back. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, we, anything was done other than it's probably at a standstill and most of the projects were oh, out already in place there's, before there's we, we are, that are happening, got any information out there you, you have you know there are definitely things happening okay i pay attention to it because i i care about it but if you it's want to respond maybe about. dante has bad email addresses if nobody ever responds to him maybe he needs better email addresses because they they hadn't some of these people hadn't seen it or heard about it until I gave them the document. Hadn't seen what? The resolution that we made, Debbie. The five G. Oh, oh. I I don't know that that's true. Yeah. I mean, I can follow. We can follow up with Dante, but I don't know that that's true, because I'm sure that all of the elected officials, because it was a list of electeds. Khalid, then if I'm wrong, um, because I know yeah. that. So the letter as that I, I as, drafted, I yes. you know included all the electeds on there. Yeah, from my knowledge, uh, it was elected the electeds that you know were uh, correspond in that area in that district. It was sent to. So yeah, um, I could follow with Dante to see if they had a follow back up, but I'm sure you know this is, has very was a very important item. Yeah, last year for you. Your com uh your committee. Yes, so because it was if Dante wrong had a response, he definitely committee. would have. Yeah, if Don if Dante had a response, he definitely would have, you know, let everybody know an update. That's them. right. Which but he I could follow does. up. I could follow up with him about yeah. that, and just you know, to just show that you know this is still important. Okay, thank you for that piece. Um. Okay, so uh, so Mr. Herbert, you did you have any more additional input that you wanted to? on that uh the sny uh piece that you came up with uh, i just put the well i was just typing you know something in uh, as far as the, the motion to put together for the resolution in other right. words i just put together something quick um the, uh -huh. you know, the community community board nine is requesting department of sanitation responses and follow-ups on key recommendations and findings noted in the new york state controllers audit dated 9 16 2020 Responses should include completion dates and completion and status updates mm -hmm. given to the community board, and then we could say no later than whatever date. That's a bad. That's a better read. Community they board, rather, I should say, no later than they can give that to us by when June. Yeah, because we we uh, shut down after June. Yeah, so by, right. by June yeah. twenty twenty four, then June first, twenty twenty four. Right. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, so oh. that gives yeah, that gives them some time to um, or a deadline, in which you know, they should at least respond. So we're all in agreement. I I'm in agreement with that the way you have it. I second the I motion. Have it now. Make yeah, a so make a okay. motion. Rod, make a motion. Ms. Westerdo, you're breaking up. So my, oh. mo my motion is that we put forth the wording that I just stated, which is the community board is requesting the public sanitation responses and follow-ups on key recommendations and findings noted in the New York State Controller's Audit dated 9-16-2020. Responses should include expected completion and status updates to the community board no later than June 1st, 2024. 
Okay, I second. Good. I yeah, that's that's Mr. good. Mr. Herbert, can you also send that to the uh, email, please? Roger that. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And then we can present it before the board. It can be in before the board on the next meeting. Uh, great. I'm really happy. Uh, and also, Mr. Herbert, the um, the uh, the link to that report. Uh, the one that I just sent. No, to where you the article that you read. Oh, you yeah. link to it? I would include that in the the email. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I will put that in there right now. Okay. Okay. I'll jazz it up a bit and I'll send it to you, uh, Kelly. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, so, great. In problem. terms of in terms of the uh, flood mitigation. Okay. Presentation. So, we need to determine. Right. So there are some key. Um, items within the flood, the storm mitigation plan, or the, in, that they should discuss, and I think there should be a, a few things they should do. They should just give like a very high level uh, review of the system, right? It'd be very high; it doesn't have to be in the weeds, right? And then, when they get down to us, what are the things that they're doing as far as? making sure the catch basins are clean, that we do not have any street flooding. Uh, their, what's known as their storm water management plan, which includes cleaning of the streets, enforcement, and also outreach. All of that is within their storm plan, especially in chapter nine. And we want a detailed explanation on chapters or, or a good explanation, I guess a detail, you know, with the plan specific to chapters 10, 9, 10, and 11, I believe. Yes, 9, 10, and 11. I think outside of that, it, it goes into uh, items that, that do concern us. But as far as optics, we will see what's in 9, 10, and 11. And that street cleaning, monitoring, uh, catch basin cleanouts, and also some of the new technologies that they're looking at to install in certain areas, such as the um, the, the trap separators that they want to install. Okay, because I think some of that information may be listed here as well, which uh, says uh, we would like to be informed about the following flood mitigation measures. Infrastructure, including dams, levees, bridges, and culverts, maintenance of existing infrastructure, ind individual flood proofing measures, improve traffic access, property uh, surveys, land use planning controls, building and development controls, catchment flood modeling. Well, that's good. Modeling is good. That is definitely because they have their content to consult this thing. I, I can't. Okay. It, it, your signal's gotten ratchety. Something, like... yeah. Your signal went all the way down. Uh -huh. You need a new device. You're traveling too much. Stop traveling and upgrade your technology. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> Are you there? Maybe he um, is can't hear anything. Maybe, huh? switch Maybe he's switching to his phone. Sometimes if you oh. turn on video, it's better. Okay. Uh, I should Are I you there? I'm here. Okay, so there you go. What did you do before? <laughs> I, I, I just my uh, I just put my phone on to uh, connected to the router. 
I was connected uh, to. Okay. <laughs> I was connected to my router, so I just connected to there. Okay, so yeah, so those are some of the uh, things that I listed here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they can they can tell us what what is their what are they doing? And the key thing, the key thing, is just to go over their overall maintenance plan. Right, that's 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 key. What is their maintenance? Plan? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that's I mean that's a part of the uh, one of the I mean some of the listings that I have here, um, mm -hmm. which as I said has to do with you know we want to know more about you know we would like to be informed about the following flood mitigation measures, which Correct. has to do with infrastructure including dams, levees, bridges, and culverts. Right. Maintenance of existing infrastructure. Individual flood proofing measures. Mm -hmm. which most people probably don't even know that, you know, live in the community. Maybe a few people, a handful of people probably have, you know, ideas um, about, you know, what they should and what they shouldn't do. Um, but for the most part, the seniors, you know, people mm -hmm. that, you know, they they need to know. They need to know that, you know, somebody is there or they can call someone you know, somebody will reach out to them because they know that they're there and, you know, provide them with information in terms of how to, you know, keep themselves safe and things like that. Um, a lot of our seniors, they don't, they're not savvy on computers and, you know, looking for things that, you know, are important like this. Um, so, you know, we have to keep them in mind when, you know, we're talking about these things and how to, you know, keep them informed and safe yes so um yeah improve traffic access and so you know it's and, and one of the biggest reasons why you want to make why storm water management is very important especially during freezing weather because yes. whenever it comes down you want to make sure that it it gets away from the roadways because roadways are well supposed to be concave Right? And when the rain comes down, it's supposed to go into the drains. Right? So, but if the drains are clogged, yeah, right, then what happens? You have ice, and then you have slip trips and falls, right. vehicle accidents. So it's it's all connected. It's all connected, and also even when they're paving the streets, if yeah. if they if it's not done to accommodate the drains that's in those areas, you know the water tend to pond in certain areas. And I noticed that a lot, you know, even at the at the crosswalks, you know, you have to literally jump over the puddles of water to get. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's it's it it's a uh, it's a number of different things that um, mm -hmm. play into all this flooding and trying to get, you know, um, a sense as to what. makes sense and what doesn't make sense but i think that when you know i don't know if they take into consideration when they come out to um you know uh put the asphalt on the streets whether they pay attention to all those little details as to where the drains are and how the you know that that those areas should be paved and you know and i think that it's just you know like okay they put up the signs the night before and they come and they do what they have to do and you know it's um that's it. You got your street paved, then you know that's not always a good thing because then, you know, us neighbors, some of us have to be sweeping the water, you know, the water in certain ponding areas to make sure that it gets into some drain somewhere, you know, around the corner or whatever. So, um, absolutely. So you know, in terms of tying this up into a nice little package, um, I guess we would want to make like a, a, a one main question or in terms of, you know, what this presentation should be, what should be the key focus. Um, so what their, their key fo the key focus should be the, the flood mitigation you know, that's what they're responsible for, 
All right. If we start talking about street uh, cleanliness and about trying to get rid of the foldables, I, I think a lot of it may, even though they do have a plan to address them, right, they won't be able to address the cleanliness of the streets. Right. Well, that's a different entity altogether. Right. Because right. they're so, going to say that's not us. That's not, that's ZSNY. However, it's interwoven because, you know, it's just like the uh, Department of Transportation. You know, you, you have to wait if there's a tree on the block and there's a fixture, light fixture there, and the tree is over superseding the, 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 the fixture. You have to wait for one to come and prune the tree before they can come and, you know, deal with the light problem. And yes. that, that, that takes forever. Forever, because I, you know, we had a problem on the block here during the summer and we kept calling. And finally, I, you know, I wrote to the uh, commissioner and I said, look, you know, you're walking in this area is very dark at night. So it's, you know, it it, it poses a threat to women um, mm. as well as, you know, seniors and children walking on the block that is very dark at night. And um, luckily, I mean, and then I send the information to Dante and. You know, it got resolved um, in a timely manner. But, you know, it was all this uh, you know, people on the block were calling as well. Um, but it goes to show how, you know, things don't get done in a timely fashion as they should. You know, um, so there's a lot of uh, different pieces that um, play a role in, in some of these uh, topics that we come up with. And, you know, it, it makes it more difficult to, you know, address or to, you know, come up with something that makes sense. And um, so, okay, so in terms of, you know, getting this final question or summary about what we want them to talk about, um, I mean, I don't. I just don't want to say flood mitigation because they will say, "Oh, you you can go online and look that up." <laughs> you know what I mean? So flood. If you want to get get more flood mitigation, all right. Also, um, capital, well, capex dollars or capital dollars to be spent, all right, with regards to improvements and upgrades. Right. All right maintenance dollars and maintenance dollars, CapEx dollars, and future and and, and uh, future funding. Because in order to do all the work, you have to be funded, not just this year. Yeah, well, future funding funding usually is is a, a, every fiscal year. So a fiscal year is what from June to or July to June or whichever you know June to July of the next year. So that's how they do their you know capital funding. Yeah, so we sh we should know that you know how much money they're going to spend. You know, so um, so I would say uh, okay, done. doing multiple things at the same time. Okay, so what I have here, I don't, I, I'm assuming that you guys read the same thing that I have, mm -hmm. uh, that I submitted, um. The Brooklyn Community Board and I Environment, Environmental Protection Committee would like to request a, pres a presentation on flood mitigation and the measures that are in place for floods in New York City and our community as well. Um, what, for example, what are the interim flood protection plans? Right. So, what are what are the plans, short and long term? Right. Because there's always there's always an immediate thing that has to be addressed. Right. So, what are your short and long term plans? Okay. And also, areas. What what areas are 
being prioritized. Right? Or their order of priority, priorities. And also, how are they selected? How do you how do you select your priorities? What goes to the top of the list? <laughs> what goes in the bottom? Okay, do we so know, do we know in our area or in our community board? Which areas were hit hardest by by Ida? Uh, the other storm we had was that two years ago or last year, two years ago. I actually tried to pull up information, and I was not. I didn't. I wasn't able to come up with anything um, in terms of what areas were, whether there were any statistics on you know the areas that were hit hard. Um, they, they there was just an announcement made. But I, I would just think that, oh. you know, oh. most areas got that rain because, I mean, that water had nowhere to go. As they said, you know, when, you know, I spoke with a few people, um, mm -hmm. they were like, you know, the water had nowhere to go. So, but True. again, you know, what, what, what are, what are the things that's in place to contain those water? You talk about, you know, green and, you know, environment where, you know, the water is supposed to, but if there's concrete everywhere, what do you do? That's what that would have come to jungle. Uh, Everything is I, not going to go to the park, Prospect Park. Uh, well, I would like to make the comment that as of yesterday, there was an announcement made that there is now federal funding available uh -huh. for people that had those issues. And I think by applying for that funding, if you had a catastrophe of any kind, they're going to be able to map that. So I think they may not know where these things occurred if nobody fills out any form or applied for it. I know the there was a I got notices to to fill out forms. So um, although I didn't personally have flooding, but my neighbors did. Um, so that funding is available now. That was just announced yesterday. There's, there's but funding. that's probably funding from what FEMA probably. I, I, I don't know. I think it's a state and federal for those. It's probably FEMA that were affected. Yeah. So that's one way to find out. <clears throat> I know they have. They probably made maps from complaints. It's probably on open data. Mm. I actually looked on. I think I went on open that open data. I didn't. Um... And I was trying to get Bader NYC to um, assist me with something as well. Oh, and there, there's a person here, Corazon Valente. Oh, hi, Corazon Valente. Let's hi. hi, welcome to the uh, CB9 Environmental Protection Committee uh, meeting. Uh, can welcome you to introduce comment. yourself. Yes. Hello. Probably stepped away. Okay. We'll we'll ask again for him. Yeah, he looked like he's in a store or well, it's probably a pin. This is pin. Anyway. Pin. It's yeah. Pin so so let's uh try to figure out this thing before we can before we adjourn this meeting. It's all already eight thirty five and um. So yeah, so I still want to tie this up so that you know it makes sense. Um, instead of just saying we would like to know more about you know flood mitigation and how it in fact affect our community directly, indirectly, and what you know can we do in terms of um You know, keeping our community residents safe, ourselves and our community residents safe. Safe and mitigate property damage. Yeah, well, I had all that listed in there as well. Property surveys, land use planning controls, mm -hmm. 
building and development controls, catchment flood model modeling. And, uh, and also, if he takes a or uh, whoever it is, he or she takes a look at it, you know, they can look at and and if if they have any questions with regards to what we're sending them yeah. for clarification, because you know they're going to do their little research as well. They'll tell the contact <laughs> us. We'll be more happy to, to clarify. Okay. Yeah, we'll be more than happy to clarify. Okay, so I'll just pretty much tie this up and send it over to uh, Dante and yeah. Any any and and that's not unreasonable. You know, hey, this is what we want to know. Uh, you know, please present on this X, Y, and Z. If you have any questions with regards to what we're asking, please let us know. Right. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I can um work on this and send it off to him mm -hmm. so that he can follow up on uh, with, you know, DEP to see when they can come out and um, speak with us or give us some information on, you know, what the future holds in terms of the environment, <laughs> which is changing mm -hmm. quickly before our eyes. Oh, yeah. So are there any further questions? What else do we have on here? Uh, so I did list uh, the um, upcoming events, plans for any upcoming event, because as Fred mentioned at the general board meeting, all committee chairs should have um, that information um, you know, available sooner than later. Um, I also thought about you know, the uh, I believe she's the uh, education chair. Um, when she mentioned uh, about clean up, clean up, a clean up mm -hmm. with our with this committee, I think she mentioned sometime in May. Um, which I don't have a problem with. Um, so I told her that we can talk about it and um, reach out to sanitation and get you know whatever we need in terms of doing the clean up. And I mean, we can do it. You know. We have committee residents join and, and, you know, make it like, you know, a big uh, cleanup thing, cleanup day or something of this sort. Um, so that's all I have. If anyone else have any additional information or input, you know, we can, um, they can, the floor is open. I just have a couple of uh, asks, suggestions. One is that the um, that if we have these speakers come, that uh, to make sure that we announce it in a way with like uh, some kind of announcement, so that people from the community will know that it's happening, and other board members that might be interested. Because I'm I'm sure people are, but I think many times we're not reaching the community you know to with these great speakers that come like the transportation committee meeting was excellent with the dot commissioner there very eye opening as to where he was at which was a bit shocking but anyway i digress i i would like to make sure that we let people know and invite them so people you know of course can come our community and um there was remember the cleanup we did debbie that group um crown heights cleanup clean up I mean, crown heights organized remember khalid yeah that you and dante were there and then debbie and i came i wonder if we could uh I've, i was following them on social media but if if they would do something somewhere it'd have to be in crown heights i would we could do something with them because they're they're very um prepared rod, rod wasn't around then but he, they have like gloves, containers, little pickup things. And there's quite a few um, young people that came along with us, Dante, Khalid, Deb and I, and about, I don't know, like 15 kids. Oh, it, was, no, we... it was weird and it was fun. I really enjoyed it. It was at night though, like picking up on Empire Boulevard from the McDonald's down to Rogers, I think, or no to No Strand. So, I do something like that again. It was super helpful, and I think it made a big difference. And I do that on my own when with my daughter a lot since then. 
like just in our block, but on certain holidays I do it. So if they could come and help, what do you think? Well, we, as I mentioned before, the education uh, committee or chair mentioned, I believe at the um, executive committee meeting that. Yeah, I, I was there, know, I heard. So we can do that. We can include them if they would want to join us. And I think that should be fine. If they um, want to, but it's just nice to have a group that's prepared with the proper gloves. And but they we, were can right get all, we can get all those things from the Department of Sanitation. I don't know about that. Really? Yes, indeed. Oh, I hope you can organize that then. That would be excellent. It the was gloves. mentioned at the executive committee meeting when she brought it up. Um, and the I think gloves, that we were talking the about gloves, that. The, the, the sanitation department will bring the gloves. and the We have bin. to call them and, and, and give them the information and let them know what we need. And um, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see that. So yeah, so we can we um. So you're not you're not into working with that same group again. I said we can invite them, but we have already spoken about. I mean, we've we've spoken about doing cleanups and walkthrough, um, which we you know we didn't did. get to, but um, since she brought it up, I mentioned that we can talk about it more and you know have do something, you know, once it gets a little warmer. Um, so, I mean, we can always include that other group, the group that, you know, we did with uh, Dante and uh, Khalid, if they want to join us, um, that's fine. Uh, but um, I think that in terms of, you know, getting the supplies that we need to do that, we can get that through sanitation. Oh, okay. So you'll follow up with that, Debbie, please? Absolutely. Um, I think that everybody will be on board once we start talking about you know, the dates and time and stuff like that. Um, All right. Let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go and I can clean up in the cold. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. So we will, I'll reach out to her again or she'll reach out to me and let me know, you know, when we can. Talk All right. Unless, unless we do a joint meeting or something like that to talk about it. Um, and then I guess we can probably get some of the school kids from um, Bishop's school to come out and help out with that. Um, so that would be good. So I don't have any further questions. I don't know if anyone else have any other questions. If not, I will move to. Wait, wait, wait. I do have something I'm going to bring up. Oops. Okay, go ahead, please. Just. If you guys could, um, if, if, if you all could put it in your, um, I just like to think about what we would do at the fair. Like if anybody has any suggestions or ideas, I know I proposed a few last time. So it, and I also don't want to get my hopes up. You know, I want to know if, um, if say it was June 1st, that's a proposed day, would, would you, be willing to do a table or something because the last few years I ended up by myself and yeah. I, I don't by myself. I would like to be with the committee, you know, so. How did you wind up by yourself if you were on a committee? Um. Well, Christian LeBeau, the first year we had it, he, he didn't come. He was, he did come, but very, very late when it was almost over. So I was by myself. And I set up a table and I had our letter that we presented and I brought a plant, did a few things. And um, he also organized like this rain barrel thing there. But um, it didn't happen because they weren't ready for it. But other things did happen. And it was pretty good. The second one that we had last year, you know, no, you didn't want to do it. Bishop didn't want to do it. You guys were all away. So I. Um, well, it's not that we didn't want to do it. It's what we were. We were scheduled to be away on that day. Well, I'm that just day, saying, yeah. I'm asking, oh, but I think that maybe we can try to know. get some of the environmental people that's in the community, um, that's doing stuff to come and join us at that event. Um, I don't see a problem with that. I think there's a committee though. If we're committed, if anybody wants to commit or no on June first, so I could just I, there or you know figure something else out. You know, maybe work with another committee. 
if you guys want to do something together or not that's my question on june 1st okay. i don't i don't have a response for that right now because i don't know you know i, I can't foresee the future of, you know at this time from now to june what may happen i mean you know um but i mean it sounds like a very you know interested or not in doing something at the fair so I, I can I mean, say I'll speak. I can say yes. I'm in, I'm interested, but June first is my tenth year wedding anniversary. Ah. So I have to I have to check with my other half. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right. So so we can come up with something. Um, All right. Well, maybe in terms even... of you, you know you... whether whether we do something ourselves or whether we get people to join us and that do work, that type of work. You know what I mean? There's people that do uh, composting. There's people that do different types of environmental uh, things. That... I, 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 I'm, I'm well aware, you know, yeah. I, I'm, what I'm wanting is not them. I'm wanting my committee to join me. But if they are a part of the committee and uh, we are not available, if Mr. Herbert is not here, it doesn't mean that the show gets doesn't go on, is what I'm saying. Okay, I just am hoping for a plan. Okay, so I, I personally don't have one right now. I mean, I'm willing oh. to be a part of whatever the, 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 you know, the event is. Um, but I can't speak that, you know, far into the future for right now. But I will be thinking about things that I can come up with, um, you know, for that possible for that, um, that day and or, you know, I don't know, I'm not sure what the date is as yet, but um, if it's June 1st, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep that in mind unless that changes um, and see what we can come up with. I mean, if it's a community community wide thing, we, you know, we can involve, like I say, other people that's doing things that we don't know about and we can learn more about. So that's that's where I'm going with that. So. Um, I will keep that mind in mind and um try to come up with some things. So all right, thanks. I move that we um end the meeting. Yes, thank you. And I um second. okay, it's now eight forty six, uh Khalid. By Good my night. time. Have a great so the meeting is now adjourned, eight forty six. Wonderful. And it's been tap it's over at the beginning of the month. Yeah. So relaxing. Yeah. Thank you. And I hope you feel better, <laughs> Teresa. Mr. Bye. Herbert, I'll look forward to getting your email. And um, I'll work on this piece and send it to Dante as well. Yes, email, email was sent. Okay, great. Thank I you. I sent an email too about the drains. Yeah. Have a yeah. good one.